All right, y'all, it's time for late night movie analysis. Or, or I don't know if this is going to be so much analysis as it is uh, just going to be, what the hell was that? Um, I'm speaking of the movie Suicide Club. This is a Japanese film, and I saw it for the first time um, maybe 2003, 2004, something like that. Uh, so a good 20 years ago. Um, it, it, uh, really freaked me out back then. And it, it's taken me, uh, it's taken me about, uh, two, it's taken me a couple of decades to decide to, to watch it again. Um, and, uh, so I did. And this time I don't think I was freaked out as much. Maybe, maybe because I, I knew more what I was was in for, although I still don't know. Uh, this is this is a movie that is highly disturbing, but also just um, well, uh, it's it's it, let's just say that that it's uh, the interpretation is is uh, uh, abstruse. Uh, the, in the final analysis, it's, it's, uh, it's rather open-ended. Um, now I, I decided to record this video without, uh, really watching any other, uh, video essays or, or, or reading any analysis of, of the film. Um, just because I, I didn't want to, I didn't want my commentary to be tainted by, by whatever I, uh, you know, whatever kind of analysis, whatever, whatever the hell people th thought this movie was about, um, or, or, you know, uh, how this all made sense. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't, I, I, I wanted to, to come at it just, just man versus movie. <laughs> just, uh, you know, without inter inter any intermediaries. And, uh, so that's what I'm doing here. So the plot briefly, um, there's, uh, a rash of suicides taking place all across Japan. Now, you know, I think Japan already has a, a, a high, Suicide rate, and of course, historically speaking, uh, you know, suicide has, um, is, uh, has, has, or has been conceived of as an honorable thing, um, uh, you know, with the kamikaze pilots, and, and they were just, uh, one of, you know, uh, a part of this general tradition, um, uh, other any other fans of Yukio Mishima out there? Uh, he's another example of uh, somebody who uh, who ended his own life in a very spectacular, very public way, uh, with some goal in mind of of restoring the glory of Japan. And I should say I'm something of a Japanophile, uh, although I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm not really all that knowledgeable. Uh, I do find, I do find all things Japanese to be fascinating, and I and I want to visit Japan someday. Um, and uh, so, the movie. Uh, well, let, let's let me first just describe the first scene of the movie. the The first the opening scene is at a Tokyo train station and people are filing in to get to catch their trains and there's a group of schoolgirls who comes in uh and uh, they they all look very happy and and just normal and they're they're like talking to one another ex just just sort of uh excitedly but but not too ex just sort of like it's a like it's a regular day, they're just bubbly uh, teenage girls. Um, and then, as the train approaches, 
and uh, the the uh, the voice on the intercom warns uh, passengers to get behind the yellow line. These girls all, as one, step to the front of the platform, hold hands, and then, as the train approaches, count to three and jump. And it turns out that 54 girls uh, just died jumping in front of a train, and there's blood splattered everywhere. It's not very realistic looking blood, but it is, it's, it is uh, still, uh, it accomplishes the effect of, uh, of being, uh, being shocking and, and being upsetting. Um, and so then in another scene, uh, there's a couple of nurses talking, uh, uh, like, uh, doing inventory or something at a hospital. One of them says, I'm going to go get a snack. Uh, do you want something? And, and the other one says, sure. Yeah. Give me, give me this or whatever. So the first woman disappears, uh, goes out, go, goes walking down the long corridor and then exit out, exits out of, out of a door. Uh, a security guard tells her that the spectacular, uh, mass suicide, uh, I, I don't mean spectacular not like, in a this awful, but also spectacular in that it caused a spectacle. Uh, mass suicide has happened. Um, the nurse doesn't seem all that interested. So she leaves. Um, and, uh, she, uh, she's gone for a while. And then the first nurse goes and, uh, hears sirens and walks to the window and opens the window, climbs on top of the window, and for no apparent reason, uh, jumps. The first nurse comes back, uh, then, uh, uh, she also, she, the, the security guard comes in and says, what's, what's going on here? Uh, I've been hearing, hearing some strange noises and, and she, and, the uh, second nurse lady is sort of in a trance, and she, but she also just sounds kind of pleasant and normal. And she says something like, well, uh, uh, you know, I'll see you soon. And she opens the window and says, oh, it feels so good. Like, uh, you know, just she just opened the window to for, for a refreshing breeze to blow in. And then she, uh, she, she also climbs on the window ledge and, and jumps. Um, and these are just, a <laughs> these are just a few of the suicides that we're, we are treated to, uh, over the course of this movie. Sorry, unalivings. <laughs> should I call, so I guess I should, uh, call this the unaliving club. <laughs> the way that, the way that people do on, uh, on YouTube. Well, I'm not monetized anyway, so I don't care. Um, <coughs> Um, so, uh, so there's the, these suicides happening and, uh, whenever this rash of suicides happens, someone, uh, uh, uh walks in or, or some, some, somehow a handbag appears at the site and within the handbag are a bunch of skin grafts of, uh, like 50, 60, a hundred people spliced together each, like, uh, uh, like a little strip of a person's skin. Um, some of the strips have tattoos. Um, and there's also, uh, a website that's gone up. This is in the early, earlier days of the internet. Um, where uh, the 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 person calling in is, is uh, tells tells the police that that the 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 dots keep appearing. There's red dots for women and white dots for men, and for every suicide, the the dots appear, and they they actually appear before the suicidal events happen. Um, and 
there's a uh, <coughs> there's a weird there's a seemingly innocuous but very weird uh, at least maybe it's not so weird in Japan but um, there's this uh, girl group and when I say girl group they're they're young girls they're like uh, uh, 12 13 14 years old um, and they seem to be wearing these like uh, sort of uh, uh, oversized night shirts and doing the, sing the singing and dancing routine and, and the, the songs seem uh, seem fairly innocuous but they all have numbers on their uh, their night shirts for some reason um, and that becomes that becomes a, something to notice later uh, but I'm not going to go into every twist and turn of the movie I'm just trying to give, I'm just trying to generally set the table here of what, what we're in for. So the police, the Tokyo police are, are, are on the scene and this is very, it's very, uh, non-woke, uh, portrayal of the police. They're all guys. <clears throat> They're all manly men. Um, some young, some older, but, uh, but predominantly men. Uh, and, uh, they're, uh, uh, they at first don't know if this is just, you know, just, just, if, if these are just events taking place or if it's some, uh, I mean, if, if it's, if it's all just random, uh, or if, <clears throat> um, or if there's some sinister force, uh, behind it all that's causing these, these, uh, all these people to commit suicide and, and, uh, so we see more and more suicides happen over the course of the movie, and uh, and so and and uh, there's one particularly uh, powerful scene, uh, and I, and I, I thought it was powerful the second time I saw it as well as I did the first time. Um, that's set at a school and, and it's just a bunch of kids and they're just, they're, they're just sort of, in a way they're just being kids. They're just being, uh, you know, they're, they're overexcited and they're, they're like, you know, you, did you hear about those suicides that the, the, all those girls who jumped on the train tracks, let's, let's commit suicide too. And they're, they're all like eating their lunch on top of the roof of the school. Um, and you can't tell whether they're kidding or whether they're, whether they're all just sort of being, uh, 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 uh being silly, uh, together, or if there's really an undertone of seriousness to it. And, and as the scene goes on, uh, you know, it seems more and more like these kids are, are really under some spell where they're, they're really, thinking, yeah, we're going to do it. This is, this is it. We're going to jump off the, off the top of this building. Um, but, but others are, are, are sort of just of, just sort of of the mindset, like, oh, this is just, we're just having, we're just having fun here. This is, this is just, uh, play acting, uh, you know, um, the way that kids do, but a few kids do end up really jumping and, uh, so we see them falling past the windows while other kids are in classrooms, uh, and we hear the splatter of their bodies. Uh, this movie doesn't hold back as far as, uh, you know, showing us, um, explicit images of, of, of the dead and, and of blood and stuff. Although, again, I would say it's, it doesn't look particularly realistic. But it's still, uh, still weird and still upsetting to see. Uh, so, what else can I say about this movie? You know, I, I, there's, there's a lot I could just, I could just talk about the plot, but of course I don't want to do that. Uh, I, I think I've already maybe, maybe told y'all a little bit too much of the plot or, or dwelt too much on the plot and not enough on what, you know, what, again, what is, what exactly is going on here? 
So we eventually, okay, well, I should also say there's this strange subplot involving this sort of, uh, <laughs> this sort of, uh, Manson like cult, uh, uh, that's, that's, um, I don't know what, the, I guess they've, they've, they, they've, uh, they're 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 in a bowling alley, but the bowling alley is connected to this apartment where they they kidnap this this girl and her friends, and and they have already have some hostages there, and they have some pigs. I think they're pigs. They've got a bunch of animals flailing around in blankets, making squealing noises, and, <laughs> and then this <laughs> this guy gets up, who's sort of a Sort of a Japanese David Bowie. <laughs> He's got his hair is dyed blonde, and, and they play this rock song as they rape and kill this girl. <clears throat> um, and it's so weird. It, it's this 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 is the part where it gets like a little campy. But I would when when I say campy, you know, normally something that's campy is just you just laugh at it. And it it's it it becomes too uh, too out there for you to take seriously. But but this movie never even even at even during this scene there there's still some very disturbing and upsetting stuff. Uh, you know we see the this cult leader slash you know would be rock star uh, <laughs> um, like step on a pig or I think they're pigs. The sounds they're making make them sound like pigs. I thought at first they were dogs, but I think they were pigs. And he, he steps on one and repeatedly and crushes it to death. And we see it, but but it's under a blanket. Ah, pigs in blankets. I don't know. Um. So this this group gets apprehended eventually, and uh, they. Uh, you know that it, it's it's revealed that they put these messages out there in in the you know uh over uh the internet uh and and you know in, encouraging people to to commit suicide and so they get it's sort of like thought that they are the ones who are behind it all but what what we find out eventually is that in some way this uh this seemingly innocuous girl group are the ones who are either behind everything or maybe they're maybe they're just observing what's going on and commenting on it in this weird uh like a uh, sort of uh, uh there's a scene where uh where this this uh, this girl who earlier in the movie almost almost died when her boyfriend jumped from a, the top of a building and landed on her, <laughs> so he died, but she she didn't, um, and uh, she's got a butterfly tattoo on her back, which is which is that some of the skin grafts have butterflies. Uh, so, um, so this girl, uh, does some invest investigating, watches the, some videos of, uh, this group and their name is either, either Desert or, or Desart, Desart, uh, there's, it's spelled D-E-S-S-A-R-T, uh, but I don't know, uh, uh, if, I don't know if that's supposed to be like the English word dessert or not, um. Anyway, uh, she she uncovers apparently some secret messages in uh, uh, on some of the posters left behind, or that or, or that have been taken of this this uh, this girl group. And then when she goes in and uh, meets with them, she ends up on a stage, and it's a it's this surreal scene where she's being interrogated by a bunch of children 
being asked things about herself. Like she knows if she understands the connection of herself to herself, um, like something like, you know, you know, the connection you, you, uh, you, you have a connection to your, uh, to your parents, you have a connection to you, uh, to your brothers and your, your sisters and your friends, but do you know, do you have, do you know the connection you have to yourself? Are you, uh, are you aware of that connection? Um, which, what, what the hell does that mean? I don't know. But it's sort of a, like a Zen Cohen type of thing. What is the sound of one hand clapping type of, type of deal? Um, I guess. It, it, unless it's just purposely bizarre and obscure. Or unless you just have to be Japanese to understand it. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> so, um, so that's the movie. I mean, I, I that's, I, I, there are a lot of things I skipped over. There's some other very upsetting moments, um, in the movie involving a character who we, we think is like one of the, one of the detectives, uh, who, who's sort of the main character, sort of the protagonist for much of the movie, but, but he has something happen to him that is horrifying. And, and, uh, and then, uh, I don't want to give, give, sir, I don't want to give everything away. I've given some things away, but I don't want to give everything away. And then things shift focus to a younger detective, um, who, uh, who, uh, seems to have some connection to the girl, uh, who I spoke of, who, who did her, who, who, uh, whose boyfriend almost landed on her and who did her own research with, with the girl group Desert or Desart. But anyway, um, this is just a crazy movie. Um, but it, it, uh, it seems to be depicting uh, a mind virus being, uh, sent through electronic means. There's lots of scenes of, of people just getting, getting on their phones. This is, this is before smartphones. This, these are just flip phones, but, or, you know, just, just regular cell phones, but there's lots of scenes of people, people's phones ringing and, and everybody just standing in the, all these, uh, Japanese school girls, you know, so their, their phones all ring and then they all get on their phones together. And, um, and so we get the idea that, uh, you know, there's some, there are some messages being sent through the ether. Um, and there are certain lyrics, you know, while, while most of the lyrics just sound totally innocent and there, there are, there are a couple of lines that, that, uh, might have darker meanings if, if looked at a certain other way. Ah, well, I mean, this is, this is a good movie though. I mean, I would recommend it. Um, I think, you know, obviously if, if what you've just heard, if you've, what, if what you've heard me describe to you, uh, doesn't sound like a movie you would enjoy, then by all means, skip it. But if, if the premise is intriguing to you, I, I, I sure just want to know what the hell this movie is about. And I know part of the, part of the allure, part of the, uh, uh, um, the, the fun of, of a puzzle is, is like, uh, that, that, you know, in some ways it never gets solved. Um, but, but, you know, and, and that's part of what makes it, I think what makes the movie interesting is that it's, it's, uh, and, and, and I, I, but, but at the same time, I don't get the feeling that it's just a movie that's, that's, that's about nothing. You know, I don't get the feeling like I often do with David Lynch. Sorry, people out there who are David Lynch fans. I know that there's a lot of you. Um, 
but when I when I've seen some of his stuff, I've generally just thought, "Oh, come on, man! You're just making this up as you go along. You don't even know what you're doing." <laughs> like uh, this is the scene is supposed to have meaning, but but it's it's it, it, there's there's no there there. This is what I this is the impression I've had with with Lynch's more. Um, I mean, with 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 his more enigmatic kind of movies, not not with the ones who are that are more, uh, or that are, I guess none of them are totally straightforward. But but uh, but none of them are, uh, but not all of them are as uh, weird or as out there as I'm talking about. But unlike with that, unlike with Lynch movies, this seems to have some substance behind it. But I just don't know what it is. Uh, it's weird, it's freaky, it's highly disturbing, but also, as I said, it's got some some uh, surprisingly camp moments, uh, and it's very, very, very Japanese, Suicide Club. Have you seen it? Tell me what you think, if you have. <laughs>